Praise the Lord, friends. I'm so glad that you're here today. So glad that you tuned into the broadcast. We're going to be talking about the power and life of the Word today. And we're going to specifically be talking about how the Word of God is eternal. And we have the eternal Word of an eternal God. It's unchangeable. And if you get a hold of the unchangeable Word of the unchangeable God, that Word has the power to literally change your life. Praise the Lord, friends, and welcome to the broadcast. I'm so glad that you've tuned in today. Uh, uh, we are sharing today on the power and the life of the Word. I'm so excited about the Word of God. You know, the Word of God has the power to change your life. And when you believe the Word, the Word creates life inside of you that will help you overcome the death in this world. And we're going to be sharing all this week about this subject. So I'm so glad that you're here today. So glad that you are connected with us. We're going to be talking today about that. I'm going to begin in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, For the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The Word of God is living. The Word of God is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Praise God. In fact, the Scripture calls the Word of God a two-edged sword that goes out of Christ's mouth. He said it divides asunder between the soul and the spirit. The Word of God will actually reveal to you what's coming out of your brain and what's coming out of your spirit. And you need to know that. It's very important. Did you know the first man, Adam, was made a living soul? The last man, Adam, Jesus, was made a life-giving spirit. That's the reason I believe that the first Adam failed so miserably, because he was living more out of his soul than out of his spirit. But when you're born again, you have the spirit of the living God in you. You've been born again by the word of God that lives and abides forever. And the word of God will reveal to you what's coming out of your spirit rather than what's coming out of your soul or what's coming out of your mind, will, and emotions. And if you live simply by your mind, will, and emotions, and you're not living by your spirit, a lot of the challenges that you face will overcome you. But if you live from your spirit, from your born again spirit, the word of God is alive in your spirit. And the written word of God shows you the difference between what's coming out of your soul and what's coming out of your spirit. And it will lead you into life. It will lead you into the good things of God. He says also, he says, it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God reveals what the intent of the heart is. It goes on and says this in verse 13, Hebrews 4, 13. Neither is there any creation that is not manifest in his sight. You see, Jesus is the living word. But he says, all things are naked and opened under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Praise God. And so when I look at the scripture, I don't look at the scripture as a history book. I look at the scripture as power and as life. Amen. There is power and there is life in the word. And you know, the Bible, if God speaks a word to you from his word, his word actually takes on life. His word has the power to change your life. Jesus said it this way in John chapter 6, verse 63. He says, it is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing. He says, and the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Thank God the word of God is spirit and life. And when God takes a word from his word, logos, the written word of God, and speaks it, rhema makes it alive to your spirit. Amen. It says the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. 
And just like in the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth with his spoken word, when God speaks a word to us from his word, and that word becomes life to us, when we speak that word, that word has power and life in us. Now, we're going to be talking about some of the attributes of the word of God today as we go into this introduction, talking about this. But today, you know what? We have an eternal word of an eternal God. The word of God is eternal. Praise God, the scripture actually says this in Psalm 119, I think it's verse 89, it says, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. The word of God is settled. The word of God is a finished thing. The Bible actually says this in Psalm 119, verse 152, speaking of the testimonies of the Lord, he says, you have founded them forever. Jesus said it this way, talking about the word of God. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Matthew 24, verse 35, he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will endure forever. Thank God the word of God is going to endure forever. The word of God is going to prevail when we're facing the storms of life, different challenges, different uh difficulties during this life, the word of God will endure. The word of God has the power, has the ability to bring us through the challenge, bring us through the difficulty that we face, to bring us to the other side. Just like Jesus gave the disciples a word and told them to get in the boat and go across the sea. You know, the sea is like the world that we face. And while they were out there in the midst of the sea, there came a storm down on the water. But the word Jesus gave them to go across to the other side had the power to get them to the other side. And so they were being challenged with this storm. While they were being challenged, Jesus came walking on the water, would have passed them by, but they cried out. And when they cried out, Jesus ended up coming to them after a series of events, got in the boat with them, and took them to the other side. Praise God. If God's given you a word, his word is going to take you to the other side. And maybe you're facing a storm. Maybe it's a storm of sickness, a storm of disease, a storm of financial lack, a storm in a relationship, or a storm of anxiety. If you'll believe the word of God, if you'll believe the scriptures, there is power, there is life in the word of God. The word of God is alive and full of power. And the word of God has the power, the ability to bring you through any challenge that you face and bring you into what God ultimately has promised you, what God has provided for you in the person of Jesus Christ. So the word of God is eternal. It is founded forever. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 8 says the word of God will stand forever. So we live in a world that's fallible, and there's a lot of different things in this world. They are passing away, but the word of God endures forever. In fact, Peter talked about this in 1 Peter uh, chapter uh, 2, actually chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23, Peter said it this way. He said, being born again, not by corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible seed of the word of God that lives and abides forever or that is living and abiding. You see, when you believed on Jesus, when you believed the scripture, you were born again, by, not by corruptible seed, but he says by the incorruptible seed of the word of God, which is living and abiding forever. He says, for all flesh is grass and all the glory of the man as the flower of grass, the grass withers. See, we live in a world where things are passing away. And he says, and the flower thereof falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word by which the gospel is preached unto you. See, a lot of times we don't understand the absolute power that's in the word of God. You see, when God gives a word, we, we live in a world with people and their words are changeable. Many times they don't keep their word from day to day. In fact, I think this is really a, a plague somewhat in the world and a plague even in the body of Christ where people don't keep their word. And I think it's hard for you really to have faith if you're a person who doesn't keep your word. You know, the Bible says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. But if you will be a person of your word and you keep your word, it helps you, I believe, have confidence in God who never lets his word fall to the ground. 
You see, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth with his word, and by his word, they're kept in store. And if God's word would fail, everything that we see in life today would pass away. But the word of God will not fail. The word of God endures forever. And even though we're in a world that's passing away, and, and they're different things that are going away. The word of God endures forever. And when God speaks a word, that word goes out of his mouth into eternity. And that word bears fruit in eternity. That word never changes. We have the unchangeable word of an unchangeable God. We have the enduring word of an eternal God. We have the eternal word of the eternal God who swear by himself. And in blessing, he would bless us. Multiplying, he would multiply us. That by two unchangeable things in that it's impossible for God to lie. We might have strong confidence and put our hope in what Jesus did when he went into the heavenly place. Praise God. So we can hold fast today to the promises of God. The word of God has power. The word of God has life. And it's eternal. It never, ever changes. Another thing that we study when we, when we study the word of God, we find out that the word of God will prosper us. I love this scripture in Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 17. The scripture says, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit. Praise God. God will teach you to profit. And one way he teaches you to profit is from the word of God. I can tell you a lot of different stories from my life, how I was facing a very challenging, very difficult situation, and the Lord would speak a scripture to me. I remember one time that we were, Barbara and I, it was in the middle of winter when we were pastoring in Kit Carson, Colorado, and we had actually purchased a feedlot to feed cattle and, and do that on the side. But because we were finishing out our basement in the fall, we hadn't bought calves for the spring, and the price of calves went way up. And I was praying about what to do, and the Lord gave gave me um, a scripture that says, where no cattle are, the crib is clean. You know what? The, and, and I had this, these crells and the bunks were empty. There was, there was no dirt, you know, right? No manure when there's no cattle. But, he, but the other part of this scripture says, but there is much increase by the strength of the ox. And Barbara gave the, God gave the other side of that scripture to Barbara, much increase by the strength of the ox. And we had a double word. On, on my side, God said, you know, you need to get cattle. And on Barbara's side, she said, there's much increase by the strength of the ox. And so we went and bought cattle, even though they'd went up considerably. And we ended up making a lot of money on those cattle. We got a word from God, from his words. So God says, I'm the Lord God, and I teach you how to profit. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this. He says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you. God has plans to prosper you. Now, that's another translation. That's not King James, but that's another translation. And God has plans to prosper us. I love the scripture in Isaiah chapter 55 talking about as the snow comes down from heaven and the rain in verse 10 and waters the earth and causes to bring forth in bud. He says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth in Isaiah 55 in verse 11. It will not return to me void. You see, the word of God is powerful. The word of God has life and it is not returning to God void empty of power, lacking. The word of God has power, but he says, it will accomplish what I please and it will prosper in the thing that I send it to. So God's word is not returning to him void. It's not returning to him void, lack, empty of power. It, he said, the word, my word will accomplish what I please and my word will prosper the thing that I send it to. Thank God when he sends his word to you, it's gonna cause you to prosper. I'll be right back after this short break. Praise the Lord, friends. I wanna tell you about something that has changed my life. The word of God has changed my life. And we're offering a special word package. And you know what? I know the word of God is consistent and the word of God that changed my life has the power to change your life. And so we have this special package that we're offering on first of all, the parable of the sower, and then on my series, the power and life of the word. And we have the power of life of the word, both in CDs and also in the book. And you can get either CDs, 
the, the parable of the sower CD or the power and life of the word CD or the book, or you can get the whole package. And I'm telling you what, if you get the whole package, that's the best deal. I believe it'll be a blessing to you. I believe it'll be a blessing to those that you share it with. And so take the time, give us a call or check us out online, get this series, the, the word series, and it will be a blessing to you. Praise the Lord, friends. It's so good to have you back. We've been talking about the power and the life of the Word of God. We begin in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 where the scripture says, the Word of God is living and full of power. It's quick and powerful. Thank God the Word of God is powerful and the Word of God has life. Then we went to John chapter 6 verse 63. Jesus said, he says, it's the spirit that quickens. It's the spirit that makes alive. He says, the flesh profits nothing, but the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. You see, when God takes a word from his word, logos, this is the logos word of God, the written word of God. But when God takes a word from the logos word of God and speaks it to your spirit, makes it alive, makes it ring with the spoken word, that word has power in your life. And that word will has the power to change your life. And so we begin to talk about some of the different aspects of the word of God. We said it is eternal. The word of God is never going to pass away. Psalm 119 verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, your word is established in heaven. Jesus said this in Matthew 24, verse 35. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall endure forever. And then we talked about how the word of God has the ability to prosper you. A lot of you say, well, I don't know about that prosperity. Well, read, you know, so many people, they don't read what the Bible says. You need to read what the Bible says and start believing it. And you know what? If you'll read what the Bible says and start believing it, the Word of God absolutely has the power to change your life in a very positive, in a very good way. Now, the next thing is the Word of God reveals the covenant of God. How do we know what God promised us? How do we know what God covenant, covenant is? By what the Word of God says. I love this scripture in Psalm 89, verse 34. God says, my covenant will I not break, he says, nor alter the thing that has gone forth out of my lips. Again, when God gives a word, God's word goes out into eternity, and, and it never, ever changes, praise God, and it produces fruit throughout eternity. You see, so many times people, they change their word. They'll say one thing in the morning, another thing in the evening. They'll say they're going to do something, and then they won't. Well, I just changed my mind, or well, that's not really what I meant. Well, if you're going to change your word, you need to go and talk to somebody and say, hey, I said this, but now I'm not able to do that. But don't just go change what you said you're going to do and not give an explanation. Praise God. You need to be honest about the situation. Praise God. So God says, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my life. I love this scripture in Proverbs 30, verse 5. It says, every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. So the word of God is pure and God is a shield. It's like a protection for those who put their confidence or their trust in the Lord. Praise God. The word of God is unchanging. It's, it's never going to change. He says, and it's a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do you know the word of God will build our faith? I love this scripture in Romans 10 verse 17 where the Bible says, Now then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now what the, uh, Paul is talking about in Romans chapter 10, he's talking about, you know, the gospel. And he says in Romans chapter 10, you know, he's talking about nobody needs to go into heaven to get God down. Nobody needs to go to the grave to get God up because Jesus already came from heaven, already lived a sinless, holy, per perfect, pure life, died on the cross for our sin, went to the grave, and God raised him from the dead. He says, now the word is near you in your heart and in your mouth. That is the word of faith that you preach, that if we believe with our heart, Amen. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So when we hear the gospel that Jesus came from heaven, lived on earth, sinless, holy, perfect, and pure, and then died on our, 
on the cross for our sins. And then God raised him from the dead. When we hear it, see, and then we believe it, we begin to say, we begin to, begin to confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord. Now, the reason we confess Jesus is Lord, because God made him Lord when he raised him from the dead. But he goes on there. That's in Romans chapter 10. He says, for with the, in verse 10, for with the heart man uh, believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But then he goes on and says this in Romans chapter 10, verse 11. He says, for the scripture says, whoever believes in him should not be ashamed. If you believed on Jesus, you don't have to be ashamed. He says, for there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. You see, God is rich to those who call upon him, for whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he says, how will they call on him in whom they've not believed? You see, if you don't believe the, the Jesus, you're not going to call on Jesus. And how will they believe in whom of, of whom they've not heard? If you haven't heard of Jesus, how could you believe in Jesus? And how will they hear without a preacher? So he says, how will they preach except they be sent? In other words, if we're going to preach, I had a preacher friend who used to say this. Some of them were called and some of them were sent and some of them got up and went. But I observed this man for a few years and after a few years, all of his get up and go got up and went. You know what? We need to do what God called us to do. We need to go where God called us to go. We need to be who God called us to be. We need to say what God called us to say. We need to, we need to understand the calling of God. It's a very powerful thing. This person actually had a very strong call on his life to be an evangelist. He was preaching 50 weekends a year, traveled out of Dr. Lester Summerall's church, and then he decided he was going to go be a pastor. And you know what? He did not have an anointing to pastor. He did not have a gift from the Lord Jesus Christ to pastor. And you know what? His church never would prosper, never did well. And so, you know what? We need to we need to go in the anointing. He says, how will they preach except they be sent? We need to do what God called us to do and what God's anointed us to do. As it, is written, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace that bring good tidings of good things. You see, we're bringing the good news. We're bringing the gospel. It's good news of good things. He says, but not all have obeyed the gospel. Now, what is obeying the gospel? For he says, Isaiah said, I, Lord, who has believed our report, he quotes Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 1. Who has believed our report? So obeying the gospel is believing the gospel. He says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Or we could say it like this. Faith comes by declaration and declaration by the mouth of God. So not all preaching brings faith. And the reason not all preaching brings faith is because not all preaching is accurately declaring who God said that he is. Faith comes by declaration, uh, Romans 10, 17 in the literal Greek, and declaration by the mouth of God. So when someone comes and declares who that God said that he is, it will cause faith to come in the hearts of those who believe it. So if we study the Old Testament, the Old Testament is a progressive revelation of who God is. And there are seven redemptive names of God. God said, I am the Lord, your provider in Genesis 22. He said in Exodus 15, I am the Lord, your healer. I am Jehovah Rapha. In Exodus 17, he said, I am Jehovah Nisi. He said in Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 8, I am Jehovah Makedesh. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. I'm your provider. I'm your healer. Praise God, I'm your deliverer, your protector, and I am the one who sanctifies you. Then he says in Judges chapter uh, 6, he says, I am Jehovah Shalom. I am the Lord, your peace and your provider. Thank God the Lord is our peace and the Lord is our provider. And thank God today we can have peace, we can have provision because of what the Lord has done for us. Finally, he says in Jeremiah 23, verse 6, he says, the name wherewith she shall, he shall be called is the Lord our righteousness. And then in Jeremiah 33, verse 16, the name wherewith he, Jesus, shall be called is the Lord our righteousness. Talking about, you know what, Jesus is our, actually, Jeremiah 23, verse 6 is the, the name wherewith he shall be called, speaking of Jesus. 
Jesus is the Lord our righteousness. And then Jeremiah 33, verse 16, the name where which she shall be called, speaking of the church, is the Lord our righteousness. So God has ascribed these aspects of his character to those of us who are in the church. Praise God. He is our provider. He is our healer. He is our deliverer and our protector. He is our sanctification. He is our peace, again, and provision, the, the Lord Jehovah Shalom. He is the Lord, finally, our righteousness. And then the very last name he gives in Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 35, uh, or the very last verse of Ezekiel, he says this, that uh, my name is Jehovah Shammah, or the Lord is there. Those are the seven redemptive names of God. So he reveals who he is. Now, when we go back to Romans 10, verse 17, he says, now then faith comes by declaration and the de declaration by the mouth of God. So when a preacher of the gospel comes and declares who God said that he is, I'm your provider, I'm your healer, I'm your protector, I'm your sanctification, I'm your peace, I'm your righteousness, and I'm I'm, I'm the Lord who's there. I'll never leave you or forsake you. That causes faith to come in the hearts of those who hear the gospel preach, the good news of the good things that God has provided for us. Now, the Old Testament reveals who God is. Then you get into the gospels, and Jesus came and showed us God. So he was like God manifest in the flesh. He was the visible representation of the invisible God. And then if you get into the epistles, when you look into the epistles, you find out that Christ Christ has taken up residence in you. So you have God in you and all those traits of God's nature, redemptive nature, are actually in you in Christ. So you already have the victory in Christ. And so when somebody comes and preaches these aspects, these truths about God, these promises of God, that word that they preach has power. That word has life and it has the ability to produce power and life in you. Well, friends, I hope that you've enjoyed the broadcast today. I've been sharing from my book, The Power and the Life of the Word, and we have a very special offer that we're offering you today on three of my products on the uh, Power and Life of the Word CD series and book and the Sower Sows the Word CD series. And I know if you get a hold of these truths, these truths will literally change your life. If you need prayer, give us a call today. Blessings. God wants the seed of His Word to produce a harvest in your life. In this package, containing the parable of the sower and the power and life of the Word, you'll learn the importance of planting God's Word in your heart so that you can receive all God has promised you. Sow the Word in your heart and watch it bring forth fruit. You can get this special package for $39. Call 719-418-4000 or visit charischristiancenter.com. Do you like to shop? Well, we have some real helpful information for you. You can go to charischristiancenter.com, go to our store. We have many different teaching CDs. We have lots of books and good information. You can get it, you can give it as gifts. It will help people be built up in the faith. So check it out, charischristiancenter.com. Thanks so much, blessings. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.